Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 126. Day, day 3126, 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the 3rd edition, 3rd edition, day 126, we are on page number 320, where we are solving the data analysis exercises. We will do problem number 3 today. In problem number 3, we are given two groups, group A and group B. We are told that in group A, we have 20 observations, in group B, we have 30 observations. And these are their respective mean and the median. Group A's median is 85. The mean, mean rather, the mean of second group, the group B is 75, the median of the first group is 80, the median of the second group is 72. Make sure the book is in front of you, it makes it easier. The question simply is, when you combine the two, two groups together, what is the combined average? It says, let me read it verbatim, it, it says what's the mean of the 50 values, combined average. So the first question here is, what is the combined average? The question, the question that we have to ask ourselves is, is the combined average simply the average of these two numbers? Is it simply the average of 75 and, and 85 combined average? The answer is no. The answer is no because here we have different number of if This would have been true if we had the same number of observations in the two groups. If the both groups had 20 observations or both groups had 25 observations or whatever it is, if we had the same number of observations in the two groups, then we could have simply taken what is known as a simple average. But here that is not the case. Here what we have to do is what is known as weighted average. Weighted average. And by the way, if at any time, if at any time you need to watch some uh, videos and get some lessons on any math concept, any math concept, just type in the name of the concept just like we did here, weighted average is the concept here, and then type in underneath my name and search for it. Because of course without my name, I'm not the only one obviously, there are hundreds of other people, perhaps even thousands of other people just like me, doing the same exact thing on the YouTube. So if you're looking for my particular videos for me, type in the name of the concept, type in my name, weighted average, and then Keshwani, and then search for it something is bound to come up. Something is bound to come up on any concept on math uh, that you might come across on GRE because, because of the simple fact that I have well over 2,000 videos, almost approaching 2,500 videos, I must have covered it somewhere, someplace, somewhere. Even, even if I did not cover it in the context of GRE, even if I covered the concept in the context of some other exam, math is math. Search for it. Weighted average, Keshwani, and you'll find more video on the concept here. So what we have to do here is Take the weighted average. We can take simple average. What weight to be assigned to this this uh, this group, group A? Think of these, think of these two groups as two classes. So exam was given. A teacher gave an exam to diff two different classes. Same exam. In the first class we have 20 students. In the second class we have 30 students. Mean of the first class was 85. Mean of the second class was 75. And the teacher is curious as to what's going to be the combined average. Combined average, as we can tell, from 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 75. From 75 to 85, the midpoint is exactly 80. But the average is not going to be 80 because we have more observation with a lower mean. Since there are more observations with a lower mean, they're going to put the average down. They're going to pull the average down. Therefore, the average is going to be somewhere to the to the left of 80. And we have to find that value. What is this value here? What is the overall average? But even before we do the work, we know it's going to be less than 80. So let's find out, shall we? So the average of the first group is 85. What weight do we assign? Well, there are 20, there are 20 observations out of a total of 50. 20 plus 20 plus 30 is 50. There, there are 20 observations out of a total of 50. In other words, we assign it a weight of two fifth. We assign it a weight of two fifth. We don't have to do 20 out of 50. That's silly. And similarly, this group has the average of 75. And weight, what weight do we assign it? Well, it's 30 out of 50. It's 30 out of 50. It is three fifth. And that's it. That's our answer. That's, that's our answer. It is the weighted average. Let's, let's, let's do it out. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. How many 5 does 8 have? 8 has 1 5. 
8 has 1 5 after we take away 5 from the 8 we have a remainder of 3 what happens to the 3 that 3 goes and joins the 5 and becomes a 35 and 35 has 7 5's there we go since we divided top by 5 we must divide the bottom by 5 which was the whole point let's do the same thing here how many 5 does 7 have 7 has 1 5 after we take away 5 from the 7 we have a remainder of 2 what happens to that 2 that 2 goes and joins the 5's and becomes a 25 and 25 has 5 5's in other words 15 times 5 is 75 17 times 2 17 times 2 15 times 2 is 30 if 15 twos are 30 if you have if 15 twos are 30 if you have two more twos instead of 15 twos if you have 17 twos it's going to be 34 and here 15 times 3 is 45 there we go 4 plus 5 is 9 and 3 plus 4 is 7 it turns out that the overall average is 79. It is to the left of it and it is 79. The overall average turns out to be 79. The next question is what is the median of the combined observation? What is the combined median? Combined median. When we put the two, two, two groups together we know that we're going to have 50 observations. The question is what's the median of these 50 observations? Give me one second. This way now, shall we? What is the combined median? Well, if we have 50 observation, then the combined median since we have even number of observation, 50 of them, therefore the combined e median is simply going to be the average of the 25th observation and the 26th observation the average of the two the question is what is the 25th observation we know 20 observations are group A which means 25th observation is, is one of these observations it doesn't matter whether it's one of this or one of this the question is can we figure out what the 25th observation is from what is given to us the answer is no we have no idea we have no idea, we have no idea what the 25th and 26th observations are. We have no idea what the 25th and 26th observations are. We don't know what they are, therefore we can it can be done. It can we have no idea. We, it cannot be done. It can not be done. There is no way for anybody to figure out what the combined median is going to be. We can figure out the combined mean, but not the median. Is there anything else in problem number three? That's it. Let's move on to problem number four. Let's move on to problem number four. Same page. Problem number four says find the mean and median find the mean and median of variable x of variable x whose relative frequency this relative frequency distribution whose relative frequency distribution is as follows let's put the relative frequency distribution on the side here so that we can do the work here So here is the variable x and we are told that it takes five possible values. x can be 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or 4. And here is the, here is the relative frequency. Relative frequency. Keep in mind, keep in mind that relative frequency 
relative frequency can be expressed in decimal or in percentage or in percentage except to us for example the first one we are told here is 0.18 which is same as saying which is same as saying that 18% of the time x takes the value of 0 or should have been here 18% of the time x takes the value of 0 in other words in other words let's just say if we had 100 observations on the variable x then what they're telling us is that if we had 100 observation, 18 of those 100 observations is such, are such that x equals 0. So here we express it in decimal and here we express it in percentage. The reason we need to understand this thing, the reason we need to understand that if they give us the relative frequency in decimal, if they give us the relative frequencies in decimal, which is what they do here, the reason we need to understand that it can be expressed also as a percentage is because we have to realize that at the end, the grand total should be 100%. Or if you're doing it decimal, it has to add up to 1. If it does not add up to 1, or if it does not add up to 100%, something has drastically gone wrong. Because if, this, because if it's relative frequency, it must always add up to 100%. That's what relative frequency means. It's not the absolute frequency. It doesn't tell you how many times something happened. It tells you how often it happened. It happened 18% of the time. 18% of the time, the variable x took on the value of 0. They go on to tell us that 33% of the time, 33% of the time, well, variable x took a value of 1. 10% of the time, it had a value of 2. And they go on to tell us that 6% uh, of the time, it had a value of 3, and so on and so forth. And 33% of the time, it had a value of 4. And if, if we if we add, add them up, as I said before, it has to add up to one. Let's quickly do it out just so just so we see it. So here we here we see you see three plus three, three plus three is six, six plus six is twelve, and twelve plus eight is twenty. Zero carry two. Two plus one is three, three plus three is six, six plus three is nine, nine plus one is ten. You see, it adds up to exactly one. And similarly, if you were to add up the percentages because they are the same. Same percentages here, it will add up to 100%. Let's find out, let's find out the mean. Is that what they're looking for? Problem number four. Find the mean and the median. Let's find out the mean and the median. Again, this is the same problem, same kind of concept as what we did in the previous problem, problem number three. Here, we have to do the weighted average. We cannot simply take the average of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. We cannot. We can take the average of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, add up these numbers and divide by 5, if all of this value occurred with the same frequency. If x takes the value of 0, and 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, there are five different values it takes on, and if we are told that it takes on these values 20% of the time, each of these values, then of course we can take a simple average because the weights are the same. But the weights are not the same, we have to take the weighted average. So first one is going to be 0 times zero, 0 times 18. Let's do it in percentage. 0 times 18 is 0. 0 times 18. And then it's going to be 1 times 33. 1 times 33. Then it's going to be 2 times 10. Then it's going to be 3 times 6. And finally it's going to be 4 times 33. And we have to divide it. Divide it by how many? Divide it by 100. Because these are percentages. Do you understand? So let's do it out. 0 times 18 is just a big fat 0. 0 times 1 is just 33. Why don't we, why don't we write them vertically so, we take, so that we don't want to. Let's just do it vertically. So this is just 0. Then we have 33. 2 times 10 is going to be 20. 3 times 6 is going to be 18. And finally, 4 times 33. 4 times 33. Well, 4 times 30 is, 4 times 20, 30 is 120. And 4 times 3 is 12. 120 and 12 is going to be 132. 8 plus 2 is 10 and 3 we have 13 carry 1. 4, 3 plus 1, 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 plus 6 plus 4, this is 4, 6 plus 4 is 100. So 0 carry 1, I mean 10. 
and then here 1 plus 1 is 2. There we go. So we end up with 203 divided by 100, and therefore the overall average is 2.03. The average of this variable is 2.03, just a little over 2. Just a little over 2. What's the median? Let's do the median. How do we do the median? We done with all of this thing, we need the room obviously. The median of this variable, well how many are there first of all? Well we don't know exactly how many are there because we don't have the absolute frequency, but we do have relative frequency. So we're going to work with 100, do you understand? There are 100 observations here because that's what we have here, 100 observations which means 100% actually. So whatever the relative frequency is, if, we have, if there were exactly 100 observations, the median would have been the average of the 50th observation and the 51st observation divided by 2. As you can add up, if we add up these two figures here, if we add up these two figures here, 18 and 33, we get a 1 and carry 1, which means, which means 51% of the observations, 51% of the observations are either 1 or 0. 51% of the total observations is, is where x takes on the value of either 1 or 0. 18% of the time is 0, but 33% of the time, 33% of the time is 1, regardless of how many observations are. We don't have to know the absolute number of observations. It goes on to 51%, which means the 50th 50th percent of 50th observation and 51st observation, they are both 1. 50th observation is 1 and 51st observation is 1. You divide by 2 because they are both 1, the median is equal to 1. The median is the average of the 50th observation and 51st observation and in both cases it is 1, hence the median is 1. What else are they looking for? It says find the mean and the median of the variable, that's, that's what it is. Tomorrow we'll do problem number five. Okay? Bye now.